Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the correct views. Had to do a restart on that. Mike died live on air, so I got to restart the entire show. Um, hey guys, it's the Dunce Camp of the Month Award show. So many of you wait for that, and uh, it is here. I'm going to do something, though, that I don't normally do, and I have to do this. I have no choice. I have to do this. We're covering the Donald Trump event. It's coming to Canton, where the show is located. Uh, Donald Trump is coming, and I am affording the whole day six, straight, exactly for this. It is the main focus of uh, probably the all of next week. I'm going to really try and get some good footage. I'm going to try to put the entire, uh, I'm going to be posting videos from the event all night long. Uh, those of you on screen share are going to see a bam right there. Look at that. That's the tickets. I'm going. Um, so what am I saying? I'm saying I need help is what I'm saying. This is a listener funded show. Everything that this show does is paid for by you. And I'm probably going to have to spend a lot of time, in which case I won't be doing other things to make this happen. So please, I'm going to take two seconds to say this. nhornsby at yahoo.com. N-H-O-R-N-S-B-Y hornsby at yahoo.com. Donate to the show, please. And uh, let me know when you do, because I'm going to be sending you these. Uh, any donation gets you one of them. $10 gets you both. They are autographed. They will be autographed by Christelle and I. Please help us. I'm asking you to please help us do this. We're going to the Trump rally on um, on Wednesday. Also, friends, 9-11 uh, news, getting into the show. I do not want to do a 9-11 show during the Dunce Cap of the Month show because one is uh, you don't really do jokes about 9-11. So that will be done at 2 o'clock. That's 7.38 where I am. It will be 2 o'clock. When I go live at the Media Speaks, we'll be covering all things 9-11. Now, we are doing the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. And uh, thank you for letting me promote that. I need your help greatly. North Korea defense chief executed with anti-aircraft fire. Now, in a way, I almost support this because I get that angry. I do. I get angry enough that I would shoot somebody with an anti-aircraft missile. I really do. Um, particularly people uh, that are just, you know, doltish in every way. But the problem with this is, this is a leader for one thing. Second of all, North Korea is one of the most destitute, one of the most poor nations in the world. Now, a lot of that is due to the way it's run, because, of course, the leader is very rich, eating his uh, Swiss cheese, gaining uh, weight while he runs almost like Nazi-like prisons in the country, funneling all the country's money towards him. But just the same, as a whole, North Korea is one of the most impoverished nations in the world. So what do they do? besides fun nuclear weapons that they can hardly use, they use valuable anti-aircraft weaponry to look hard, yo. It must be because he hangs around Dennis Rodman. I don't know. It's just a thought. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un had his defense minister executed with anti-aircraft fire for insubordination and dozing off at a former military rally. So basically this military rally was going on and this guy was sitting there and Kim Jong-un was up there and he's got like Swiss cheese coming out of his mouth and he's going, I am sure that I can lead my country into great things. What do you think? And he looks over at this dude and the dude's like, Kim Jong-un, oh, me shoot you with missile. Uh, I don't know if he talks that way, but the newscasters do. Me shoot you with missile. Uh, actually, he's not quite as animated. But you get the point. 
If confirmed, and no one would be surprised, it marks another demonstration of Kim's ruthlessness in dealing with even the most senior officials suspected of disloyalty. Following the execution of his uncle and one-time political mentor Jang Sang Theik in 2013. Uh, it also says that there could be struggles in leadership. I bet there is. He is a madman, and everyone knows that, and they want to get him out of power. Uh, but the trouble is the people that want to get him out of power just want to be another version of him, by and large. Um, in a briefing Wednesday at a parliamentary committee, Han Kai Bium, I may have butchered that, the deputy director of NIS, with, said hundreds of people witnessed the execution of Defense Minister Haiyan Shunchol, which was believed to have been carried out on April 30th at a military academy in northern Pyongyang. Han told reporters that intelligence suggests that Han was shot to pieces using anti-aircraft gun firing 14.5 millimeter rounds. Uh, what do you say to that? I mean, what do you say? You should get the Dunce Cap of the Month award. That's what you say to that. Um, responding to the NIS report, Seals, Scholl's uh, Unification Ministry of North Korea was under a reign of terror aimed at consolidating Kim Un's undisputed leadership. So obviously there's infighting going on here, but uh, and politically frustrated. And an experienced leader like Kim can often play a tendency for overly dramatic and brash moves. Well, one thing's before, one thing's certain. You won't be finding anybody. Uh, oh, excuse me. You won't find anybody dozing off there at uh, Kim Jong Un's uh, next meeting. I assure you. Uh, moving on. This is brought to you by Change Transportation. Now, don't call Uber. Call Change and let them know you heard about it on the correct views. You'll get a discount. The Huffington Compost, Christelle found this. Three million dollar lottery winner invested cry, prize in what? Crystal meth ring. This, how would you use this much crystal meth? It reminds me of the story of, um, I, I want to say it was the original guitarist or drummer of Guns N' Roses. Basically, thrown out of Guns N' Roses during their height back in the 80s, thrown out of Guns N' Roses for overt drug use. How much, it always been, how, how much, how many drugs would you have to use to be thrown out of Guns N' Roses? They were like oh, the epitome of drug use. Well, I, I this man might actually be able to answer that rhetorical question. Christelle found this, look at this. Ronnie Music Jr. Yeah, I, I got some music for you. How about this? There you go, Ronnie Music Jr. A former Georgia lottery winner has pleaded guilty to federal drug trafficking and firearms charges. Mr. Music, 45, won $3 million. Like scratch off, like scratch off lottery. So I mean, it's even harder to win it. But it, you, you always get like you know a free ticket or some garbage on those. Three million dollars playing a scratch off lottery game in 2015, but gambled his prize on the distribution of 11 pounds of methamphetamine, according to a statement released Tuesday by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Georgia. Now. Long-time listeners know that I don't bank. I don't trust banks. I think banks are inherently corrupt. So I say this with a bit of a caveat. There might be other ways to do this that are better. But a million dollars sitting in the bank, depending on how you work out the deal, will roughly get you $30,000 a year for the rest of your life if you don't touch it. Now, I know things flux, things move. It, it could be 28 one year. It could be 35 the next. Don't split hairs. About $30,000 a year. That meant that with $3 million, Mr. Music had $90,000 a year. Now, you could argue that 
he, he wasn't even so much using it, perhaps, as trying to sell it. Trying to sell it for what? To get rich? You're already rich. <laughs> I mean, if you can't make it on $90,000 a year, then give the damn money to me. I'm asking listeners to donate at nhornsby at yahoo.com so I can afford to look at, uh, to make a Trump documentary. This bonehead is spending money on 11 pounds of meth. Defendant Music decided to test his luck by sinking millions of dollars of lottery winnings into a purchase and sale of crystal meth. U.S. Attorney Ed Tarver said, as a result of his unsound investment strategy, he now faces decades in a federal prison. Authorities caught music and co-conspirators attempting to sell drugs worth an estimated $500,000. As part of the case, the investing agent seized one million dollars worth of meth. So that there's a real genius right there that we're looking at. You might be asking why he didn't win the Dunce Cap of the Month award. Christelle found it too late, and it was technically a July story. Uh, moving on, this is uh, this segment here brought to you by our friends at the Seacrest Motel. If you have not been to the Seacrest Motel, go there. Go to Cedar Point. Say, hey, I heard about you from the correct views, and she's going to say, guess what? You get a discount, and you're going to get a great rate on your room because you're a listener. Liberty Brits Creek, Michael Krieger, yesterday, CNN analysts claimed Hillary health concerns were sexist. And then next day, CNN doctor questions Trump's health. Now, this is interesting to me because I remember, because I was a huge Ron Paul fan, I was um, a supporter. I was sent, I sent him, I don't know, 50 or $100 throughout his campaign. Christelle did the same. We did our damnedest. And I remember people saying, well, you know, he is older. He's not going to be able to hold up very well. The man has held up extravagantly, by the way. He has started the Ron Paul Institute, and you see him giving far more press conferences than you do Mrs. Clinton. So he was fine. I remember hearing it about John McCain. I'm not going to go over that. Everyone's heard that. But how many of you remember it was Dick Cheney? Oh, he had a heart attack. He had a heart attack. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Dick Cheney, but I'm saying what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Quack, quack. You can't say one thing about someone and then not expect it to be said later on. Hillary Clinton is right in the ballpark age of Ron Paul. So these are fair questions. Uh, do I hope that she's sick? No, no, not really. I don't wish that on anyone, not even the truly evil of which I consider her. Um, I don't wish sickness and disease on people. Uh, that show, this show doesn't do that. Uh, we can beat her on issues. We don't need to beat her on whether or not she's sick. However, if she is very sick, we have a right to know that as a people. I mean, come on. We, we, had, we had a president in a wheelchair, and uh, he didn't affect his ability to lead. My problem is, does she have brain damage? That could affect her ability. Also, you guys are going to want to take a special look at Mr. Kane if uh, if there's a chance that Hillary could be sick. Because if we're looking at a President Kane, what exactly does that mean? We need to learn a lot more about Kane, don't we? Um, I do know it's kind of spooky to have a president with the last name of Kane during times that look biblical, but we'll go with it. Um, which is CNN? Is it legitimate or is it sexist? Yesterday, The Hill reported the following, quote, New CNN political analyst Kirsten Powers said questioning Hillary Clinton's health was an element, has an element of sexism to it. In other words, you think men are better than women, which doesn't make any sense. No one thinks that. Powers, a former Democratic strategist who just came to CNN following a long stint as a Fox News contributor, <coughs> excuse me, told New Day co-host Allison Camarota that there's nothing to indicate the Democratic presidential nominee is not in good health. Honestly, I think there's an element of sexism to this power said. Yeah, because we didn't question the health of men, except for the ones, you know, I told you about in great detail. <sighs> Madness. The way that they've talked about her, you know, the way that they you watch Drudge Report posting things about granny and grandma. Well, nobody cared when these jokes were being made about Ron Paul. 
the traitor Mark Levin was calling uh, Ron Paul a caretaker. Um, you know, Ron Paul does look a little like caretaker. But I mean, that was that was that sexist? Did, did, did Levin hate men? This is ridiculous. It's it, it's it's trying to put a square peg in a round hole. People that are asking about her health are asking about her health for the reasons that I talked about at the beginning of this segment. They don't give a damn what sex she is. Also from the Hill now, we see CNN's resident anchor Senjay Jukta questioning Trump's health. It's okay because he's a man though, right? CNN's uh, Senjay Jaffa is casting doubt about Donald Trump's health, even asking whether the GOP presidential nominee is at risk for heart disease. I don't know what to make of this letter, and uh, they're talking about this letter that supposedly uh, comes from Dr. Harold Bornstein, who examined Trump. Um, On Wednesday, the neurosurgeon went even further by questioning Trump's health during an appearance on CNN Morning New Day. All right, look. Let me cut to the chase here. They aren't particularly young people, and you have vice presidents for a reason. Can we focus on the issues? It's not like Mrs. Clinton is going to say, yeah, you know, you guys are right. I'm just going to go ahead and for the good of the country. It's not going to happen. So come on, friends. Let's focus on winning on the issues. We're stuck with the ones that we have, as Gary Johnson uh, greatly damages the Libertarian Party, but that's a topic for another show, although it is dunce-related. Um, this is PJ Duff, Paul Joseph Watson, the runner-up for the dunce gap of the month, brought to you by Sticker Junkie. When you get your Sticker Junkies on check out, type in the correct views or correct views and get a discount at StickerJunkie.com. Hillary slams KKK Trump, but her friend and mentor, was KKK leader Robert Byrd. Now, I wasn't even going to mention this because I used to, before he became arrogant and talked over his callers, and every time someone made a point, just hung up on him, played the Levin sample about the dope. Prior to that, I used to listen to Hannity. When he was first starting, he was actually a host. Now he's just an arrogant jerk. Um, He would always refer to Robert Byrd as KKK Byrd. And I heard it so much that I just figured everyone knew it. But I guess there's a large segment of the population that doesn't, so we're going to cover it before we get to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award next. Hillary Clinton's new campaign strategy is to claim that Donald Trump is the candidate of the KKK, conveniently leaving out the fact that Hillary herself described Robert Byrd, who was a KKK leader who once called black people mongrels, she calls KKK Bird her friend and a mentor. Earlier today, the Clinton campaign released a video which makes the case that Donald Trump is the candidate of racists, white supremacists, and neo-Nazis. The reason a lot of Klan members like Donald Trump is because of what he believes. What, what he believes, we believe in, says rogue KKK imperial wizard in the clip, which is, which is you know, what that bonehead did say um now let let me clarify that first let me clarify that right there first because there's a false dichotomy going on here and this might be the most prudent thing that i say during the entire course of this show this is why you should hit subscribe this is uh this is important the grand wizard of the kkk says we're voting for trump because Trump believes what we believe, because we believe that you should build a wall, and some members of our party believe that you should kill Mexicans. People hear that, and they say, the leader of the KKK just said that Trump agrees with them, and they agree with Trump, because they want to build the wall. Now, that is like saying... I don't want to. I don't want to pick a band here, so this isn't true. But let's just pretend the Grand Wizard's favorite band is Metallica. So they say, I like to watch Sam's show because sometimes his show plays samples of Metallica, and I think that's awesome. And we like to kill black people. Now, when someone hears that, they're gonna say 
oh, Sam's tied to the KKK because they both listen to Metallica. That doesn't make any damn sense. Um, it's a media spin. It's the media trying to take the easy way out and make it look like they're not biased. Just because the leader of the KKK is in favor of certain things that make sense dealing with immigration does not mean that any of the racist ideals that they hold are shared by me or anybody else that is supporting Donald Trump. And that's important to them. Second of all, uh, it says here, Hillary is also set to give a speech in which she attacks the Trump supporting alt-right by demonizing it as racist and misogynistic. That means against women for you Kesha fans. However, Hillary's attempt to denounce Trump by linking him to the KKK laced with hip is laced with hypocrisy because Hillary herself once praised ex-KKK kingpin Robert Byrd as her friend and mentor. Byrd became the leader of the KKK chapter when he was 24 years old because he didn't want to fight alongside race mongrels who were a throwback to the blackest specimen of the wilds during World War II. I shall never fight in armed forces with a Negro by my side, vowed Byrd in 1944, a letter to Sen Senator Theodore Bilbo of Massachusetts, which is interesting because maybe I'm stereotypical here. I'm not politically correct, so I'm going to say it. If I'm going into battle, I'll tell you what, I know very few, you, or maybe it's because I live in 44703. Look it up. I know very few black men who don't know how to carry themselves. That's not because they're thugs. It's because this whole area is really, really rough. So when you when you grow up here, you learn to hold your own. I would take any white man or any black man from this zip code, uh, for one thing. Um, the, I have no idea what Robert Byrd meant. Uh, African Americans, even among those who are racist, and I don't care what color you are. Even among those who are racist, supposedly African-Americans have a reputation for being violent. This bonehead didn't want to go to war with people that his racist self thought were violent. Uh, does that make any sense? So, um, in fairness, later on, he claims to have renounced this. But if Donald Trump was saying he was mentored by somebody who led the KKK, oh yeah, and they renounced it later. Would he get a pass? Do you think that would happen? Um, no. No, it would not. Uh, he'd be crucified. Um, Byrd sub subsequently wrote another letter in 1946 in which he asserted that the Klan is needed today as never before, and I am anxious to see its rebirth here in West Virginia and in every state in the Union. Anxious being the operative word, although he didn't mean it, I'm sure. Bill Clinton later justified Byrd's KKK history by saying that he was just trying to get elected. Now, see, that says a lot. Because now you're not saying <clears throat> that you supported Byrd as a mentor to you. You, looked, you. you reflected on him that way because he renounced it. You actually forgave him just because he was trying to get elected. That's particularly dirty. After his death in 2010, Clinton gave a glowing eulogy of Byrd in the video that was uploaded to the State Department's page, and she said the country lost a true American original, her friend and mentor. And she says, from her first day in the Senate, I sought out his guidance. Why would she seek out his particular guidance? And was always generous with his time and his wisdom. He had, I admired his tireless advocacy for West Virginia's constituents. constituents his fierce defense of the Constitution, and on and on and on and on and on. So what we have here clearly is a case of the uh, pot calling the kettle black. We also have the dunce cap of the month award winner. Yes. There's our music, the dunce cap of the month award. Who won? Who won? Who won? Once again, guys, I'm brought to you by Change Transportation. Don't call Uber, call Change. Let them know you heard about it on the correct views and save a fortune, especially compared to Uber. 
this is almost too painful to even give, but I, I'm going to go to screen share so you can read it with me. It's that good. We've got the ultimate dumdy here, but it's going to take you a minute to understand why. This dumdy builds up, which is like, you know, the best dumdies. It really is. All right. Get this off. State Department dodges RT questions about U.S. backed moderates implicated in Syria chemical attack. So let's go through this article and see if we can find where the dunce is. It's hidden in this one. Washington dodged questions about a chemical attack in Syria, which the Russian military has blamed on U.S.-backed militants. That's people that we gave your tax dollars to, to fight ISIS, supposedly, even though they are ISIS. Refusing to clarify whether the incident, is, con if confirmed, would disqualify the group from being considered moderate. What? Stay with me. Shells suspected to have contained chlorine gas were fired into the Salahuddin residential district in eastern Aleppo on Tuesday. The Russian defense minister said Wednesday, identifying the perpetrators as militants of the Harakarat Naur al Din al Zenki group, <clears throat> easy for me to say, considered by Washington as moderate opposition. That means you know, they're the kind of the middle of the road, Islamists, good people, safe to give our money to, right? Well, of course, they say that they condemn them and they let you know, you know, wh where this group is at, of course, in Aleppo, which Gary Johnson doesn't know where it's at. Um, <clears throat> asked if Washington had a line that should not be crossed if the rebels wanted to keep U.S. support, that is our tax dollars and our lives, uh, Mark Toner, who is the State Department spokesman, who is winning the Dunce Cap of the Month award for a hint, retreated to invoking International Syria Support Group, which is an informal body made up of stakeholders in the conflict that includes Russia and Iran. In other words, he's saying, well, this group that we're part of, these led by uh, leaders of many nations, all chose this group. <clears throat> Therefore, you know, I didn't choose them. But when asked flat out whether or not they were a terrorist group, if they were responsible for this chemical attack, for this terrorist action, listen what he said. See if you can find the dummy. These are not easy processes. And in one incident... Here or there would not necessarily make you a terrorist group, Toner said, adding that a group would be considered terrorist if it showed clear intent to carry out terrorist attacks both in Syria as well as in the West. So, do you see the dumdy? I will point them out. There are so many in this paragraph that it's hard to even speak. It's not an easy process. You knew that when you took the job. That's not so bad. One incident here or there would not necessarily make you a terrorist group. All right. So does that mean that, you know, one or two rapes doesn't really make you a rapist? Maybe one or two heroin transactions doesn't really make you a drug dealer. Do you, an incident, an incident means a bombing. It means a, a, an attack. It means a beheading. It means killing children, okay? One incident here or there wouldn't necessarily make you a terrorist group. And he added that the group would be considered a terrorist if they showed out the intent to carry out attacks in Syria as well as the West. Okay, so... You're only considered a rapist if you plan to rape people in Syria and America. Otherwise, you're not really considered a rapist. Um, those of you that have loved ones doing time for drug sales, you know, they weren't really drug dealers. As long as they were only selling the drugs here without selling it to the West, they weren't necessarily madness. So here you go. I'm going to screen share so I can show you what I'm mailing this dumbass as soon as I get it printed. 
the dunce cap of the month award for Mark Toner. And I'm going to show you the hat in a moment. The one on the screen is not it. This dunce cap of the month award is given without reservation to Mark Toner of the U.S. State Department for actually being stupid enough to stand in front of a microphone and say, quote, one incident here or there would not necessarily make you a terrorist group. Since you, and you alone, seem to know how many terroristic acts, murders, bombings, and beheadings it takes to make one a terrorist, and for making the world a more vile and moronic place to live in, you, Mr. Toner, win the dunce cap of the month award. And there it is. He's getting that mailed to him as well as this hat. Uh, first of all, I want to show you the letters. I'm very proud of this. It says uh, English, Arabic. Because no matter how it's written, you are an idiot. And here you will see dots written in English and dots written beside it in Arabic. Here we have one bomber. If you notice there, he's holding the, the deadly bomb. Okay, it might be a firecracker. Uh, I drew him and it says, Mr. Toner, how many I kill and still get money? He needs to know that because he wants to make sure he keeps getting his American money. And here we go, uh, a nice liberated outfit there. Uh, you see, uh, it could, I think it's male or female. I think it's male. One of my best cartoons there, by the way. Okay, awesome. Uh, Mr. Toner, how many heads may I cut off and still not be a terrorist? Friends, that is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, the show. It's done. We're going to send this cap out. It's going to the State Department. I'm actually doing it. I'm standing up for what matters, and I'm asking you to stand up for me. One last plug before I leave. You want these? Donate at N Hornsby, N H O R N S B Y. Even a dollar, I don't care, something. N Hornsby at yahoo.com. And I'm going to the Trump rally. I'm going to be posting things all day long. I'm going to be engaging protesters peacefully. I'm going to be talking to supporters. I'm going to be in the thick of it, and I need your help to help pay for it because I'm taking the entire, I'm trying to put more time into the show and make this more my job. And for that to happen, I need your help. Good night, friends. God bless, and thank you for listening.